Hi, Marilyn. How are you? That and share screen. Have you let the other attendees in? So right now we have 23 people in. So that's just coming in. Uh, I, I don't, there's no host room. They just come in as they go. So if there's any issues, if they just dis disconnected, they just come in as they go. All right. And then just double checking that everyone could see my screen. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Just going to keep here. I have my backup laptop here just in case anything happens. And, and we are good. Am I ready to go? You are all set to go whenever you're ready. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Are we, we are live. We are live. Welcome to everyone this afternoon for our webinar on healthy indoor and outdoor air for childcare. We invite you to participate in this uh, presentation. We're coming to you from Women for a Healthy Environment and the Philadelphia Regional Center for Children's Environmental Health. It's a combination of the two organizations working together to present this information to you. Welcome, I am Lorna Rosenberg. I'm with Women for a Healthy Environment and the Healthy uh, Buildings Coordinator for Women for a Healthy Environment in the Philadelphia office. We are an organization that's a nonprofit home-based in Pittsburgh with a Philadelphia office and we're partners and collaborators with the Philadelphia Regional Center for Children's Environmental Health. We're so excited you can join us today. Uh, we have two excellent presenters, and they are Randy Prasad, who is with Women for a Healthy Environment, and Randy is our assistant program manager here in the Philadelphia office, and he is presently a graduate student at Drexel University's Dornsife School of Public Health. And we also have presenting today, Dr. Marilyn Howarth, who is a uh, physician and she's with the Philadelphia Regional Center for Children's Environmental Health. And with that, uh, I'm gonna tell you that we're excited for you to ask questions and participate as much as you can. Please enter your questions in the chat, which we will be keeping a record of what your questions and comments are. And at the end of our of both presentations, there will be plenty of time for answering the questions that you give us. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the program over to Randy and he will begin uh, his program on outdoor air quality. All right, thank you, Lorna, for that. And thank you for everyone for joining so far. Once again, my name is Randy Prashad and I'll be giving the first part of the presentation and we'll go right into it. So before I start talking about the webinar topic specifically, I would like to plug in the Healthy Child Care Champion Program that is offered by Women for a Healthy Environment. This program is provided to child care providers who are interested in gaining one-on-one -on -one training, guidance, and free resources from our organization. Once you complete this one-hour assessment with either Lorna or myself and online training, you can receive two free Keystone Stars and an endorsement for your facility. My email and number is here as well, as well as Lorna's. You can take a picture of this, but at the end of the PowerPoint, you'll have her contact information again. All right, so why are we here and what are we even talking about today? So a few weeks ago, we've seen a lot of this talk about air quality in Philadelphia. And Philadelphia has seen historic air quality readings for the past few weeks. And these have been record high. These have not been record high numbers since 2008. A few weeks ago, it was a little bit hazy outside. It smelled like a campfire. And we all saw alerts here, like we see on the screen here from the news. And we had a bunch of alerts going on our phone. Now, what did this cause? This caused a lot of confusion because no one knew what to do. No one knew how to handle this. Now, the number that kept being reported was something called the Air Quality Index or AQI. I put a definition up here and I just wanna make it as simple as possible as I can. 
the AQI is reporting how clean, or you can look at it, how polluted the air is. It tells you what health effects might be of concern. How you calculate the API, there's a bunch of numbers involved, there's a lot of monitors involved, but what it does is it takes all of these pollutants in the air and it gives you these numbers. Now, this number that I'm talking about runs from zero to 500. This is not just a solid number. This number is a whole lot of things, a whole lot of factors going on. But how the easiest way to think about it is the higher the AQI is, the greater level of air pollution there is and the greater health concern. I did throw this chart over here on the right side of the screen, and it could be a little confusing to look at, especially if this is the first time you're hearing about it. How I try to tell uh, chocolate providers when we talk about it is focus on the color and focus on these words that are associated with it. The word good means green, yellow, moderate, orange, unhealthy for sensitive groups. And I'm going to go more into this in depth and I show, I'll show better charts. That I'll talk about this a little more. Now I'm showing this big bar graph here. What this bar graph is showing is the AQI readings in Philadelphia for about the last month. So my first date I have here goes from June 5th. And the last day I did was 4th of July. But I pinpointed nine days specifically. Why did I report the nine days? Is because those are the days that were marked unhealthy, very unhealthy, and unhealthy for sensitive groups. So I want to talk about unhealthy and very unhealth unhealthy first. This is for everyone. This is for going from children to the elderly. It is unhealthy for anyone to have been outside these kind of day, these days for an extended period amount of time. That's why you saw they were saying, don't go outside if you don't have to. Wear a mask if you can. So those days specifically will be your red days and purple days. So if you were focusing on the app and you saw red and purple, that's what they were talking about. But then I also put in unhealthy for sensitive groups. Now, who is a sensitive group? The sensitive groups are people with heart or lung disease, people with diabetes, older adults, so the elderly, but also children. So now this means that there were nine days within the past month between June and July that it was unhealthy for children to be outside for an extended period amount of time. And this is important for childcare providers to know so you're not having your kids playing outside for a long amount of time or unprotected in some kind of way. So I said I was going to show this chart over here. It's a more simple chart on how you can look at AQI with the colors and the words. So once again, good is green, moderate is yellow, orange is unhealthy for sensitive groups, unhealthy and very unhealthy are red and purple, and that goes for everybody, the entire population. Now I have this slide here with just a bunch of dots. Now, what are these dots? These dots are showing the different air quality monitors that are collecting data and concentration of pollutants and give that AQI reading either for the city or a region. The monitors collect readings and computes this AQI number for all the different neighborhoods and regions. Obviously, we're talking about Philly. So if you're living in, if you're living in center in, I guess, center city, North Philly, South Philly, West Philly, and then you want to get into specific neighborhoods like Cobbs Creek. You can find your specific neighborhood's AQI. Now, how can you as a child care provider track your AQI? Because tracking the AQI is very important for providers. And it's also very easy as well. As we'll hear later on in the presentation on why it's important to track the air quality uh, AQI. And when it comes to children, I want to just provide a resource on how to do so. So that resource is this website called airnow.gov. You can easily access this on your phone. You can easily access this on a laptop or computer. And all you do, and this is the one that I computed, you just throw your zip code, your city or your state in here, depending on how specific you want to go. And it gives you the word that I told you associated, that I was showing to associate it with and the color. It also gives you that actual number if you're interested in it. And you can explore this website to figure out what kind of pollutants are giving the concentration. Can I figure out this specific pollutant? Yes. Can you see the different health and risk? Yes. Can you see the sensitive groups? Yes. So this is a great website to use and utilize for your childcare facility for your safety, but also the children's safety. Now, let's talk about how you as a provider can keep your facility's indoor air quality safe. To keep it safe, it's important to know what impacts the indoor air quality. And there's four things. The indoor sources, outdoor sources, outdoor concentration, and ventilation. 
So looking at this slide, there's a bunch of words. We're going to talk it out and we're going to figure out how this makes sense for a childcare facility. So I put a little formula up here that says indoor air quality equals all four of those things that impact it. I like this formula because it actually shows you what makes up an indoor air quality, but it talks about what impacts it. So the four impacts, indoor sources, outdoor sources, outdoor concentration, and ventilation. Indoor sources, that's your pets, mold, gas stoves, tobacco smoke, lead, radon, and VOCs. Now, if you've done the Health Key Ch Child Care Champion program with us before, I've taught we talk about what lead, radon, and VOCs are. If you have if you haven't done the program before and you want to know what these are, I'll just give a quick brief introduction to what these these are, what these factors are. So lead. Lead is a poison affecting nearly every system in the body, including the brain and nervous system. There's actually no safe amount of lead exposure, and lead is extremely dangerous to children given that it's going to impact their specific body systems and they're sensitive due to their growing bodies and their, able, their ability to absorb more lead. Radon. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer and it's the number one cause of lung cancer among people who don't smoke. It's an odorless, invisible radioactive gas that can enter your homes from the ground up. So it is very important to test for this. And lastly is VOCs. These are different chemicals that you can find in your air fresheners, aerosol sprays, and pesticides. Now, outdoor sources. That's your cars, roads, construction, heat. Outdoor concentration. That's just different chemicals, different gases that are outside. And lastly is your ventilation. That's your fans, your HVAC system, windows, and screen doors. Just looking at this PowerPoint slide, there are two things that childcare providers can actively do to control the indoor air quality, and that's your indoor sources and your ventilation. And for the last couple of slides that I'll be talking, those are what I'll focus on. So how can you reduce your indoor sources? One, you use air filters. Use them at the highest speed as they're very effective in air cleaning and particle removal. Two, test your facilities. Test it for mold, asbestos, and lead. Three, reduce scented fragrances. That's such as scented candles, air fresheners, and cleaning products. If you look right over to the right of the screen, I have a little tip sheet that we've put out before. And it's just saying that these air fresheners, these scented fragrance, they don't freshen the air. They don't clean the air. What they do is they irritate the lungs with these chemicals and you're just pumping more chemicals in the facilities. And the last thing is the use of eco-healthy safe products. And that'll be the last two slides I talk about because it's important to push this EPA safer choice label. And while I say that is because these are, these are products that you can use and you can be safe to use in your facilities. So the labels that I talked about are right here on the screen. When you're shopping for your own all-purpose cleaner or your disinfectant, you want to look for Eco Logo, right? I don't know if you can see my mouse, but Eco Logo here on the bottom left, the Green Seal Certified, the EPA Safer Choice, Fragrance Free. And that goes more into here. And once again, if you are interested in learning what those symbols are, I'd be more than happy to send those out so chocolate providers can have that. But as child care providers, you also know so much about cleaning and disinfecting. Cleaning, we know that's just cleaning the surfaces, preventing the germs to coming back in. Disinfecting is actually killing those germs. So when you're trying to shop for your wipes, when it comes to the all-purpose cleaners, when you're trying to find sprays, when you're trying to find laundry detergents, you want to make sure to look for those labels. When you want to talk about disinfecting, we all love to use bleach, but that means we also have to cut the bleach and we know it has a shelf life. We also know that when we wipe a surface with, with bleach, we can't have the kids immediately touch it. So there are other products that we could recommend as well. But when you're looking for these disinfectants, look for those labels as well when it comes to wipes and sprays. And that is all I had to say today. But my, once again, my name is Randy. I work for Women for a Healthy Environment. My email is here. If you have any questions at all, the last slide, I'll come back and I'll say a little more, a little more to talk one more time. But there's our Instagram. There's our website. And now I'll pass this over to Dr. Marilyn Hotworth as well. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Randy. That was a great um, start. And I, I'd like to take us into a little bit more depth and talk about some health impacts and also um, uh, really help to negotiate 
what must be very confusing for people, <clears throat> including myself, not in the ventilation um, uh, engineering uh, field. Um, you've heard over the last couple of years how important ventilation is to reduce um, the transmission of COVID and other respiratory um, uh, illnesses. And now we're hearing how we ha almost have to do the opposite of that ventilation in order to manage these poor air quality events. And so I think it's very important to um, uh, think about these things together. Uh, next slide. So when the air outside is good, on a good day when we have clean air quality, when the air quality index is green, um, we, we want to do whatever we can to enhance ventilation. Open windows, uh, turn on ceiling fans or use other fans to move the air around. Even put an exhaust fan in the window to um, exhaust the air outside um, as you bring in clean air from the open windows otherwise. And similarly, use an air purifier to actually remove any particulates that may end up in the air. And after doing that for a while, you end up with a very, very um, good air quality inside. Um, uh, an air quality where uh, the there is reduction of transmission of any viruses. And by viruses, we really can think of them all in the same category, whether it's flu or COVID or the common cold or other viruses that are respiratory ones, ones that we breathe, um, they, they all can be reduced in this way. And the other, the other things that Randy talked about, those volatile organic chemicals, basically fragrances and cleaning products and those other um, um, uh, volatiles that come out of furnishings, let's say a new chair or new carpet, those um, chemicals we can dilute with this kind of ventilation. We also all exhale carbon dioxide. Um, we, take, we breathe in oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide. And if there are many of us in a single room um, without good ventilation, that carbon dioxide can build up over the course of the day. And so with good ventilation, we reduce that too. And although carbon dioxide itself is not toxic to us, if there's high enough concentrations, it can make us sleepy and not just not feel great. So it is healthier to actually increase that ventilation and reduce the carbon dioxide levels. Next slide. And there are um, other kinds of um, systems that might you might have in your childcare center. Um, there are um, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems, HVAC systems, that often blow air out of vents. And so here are two examples of, of what your vents might look like. And if you have that, these kinds of vents, you probably have this HVAC system. So I wanted to talk about that uh, for just a minute. Um, when you have this kind of system, believe it or not, it works best with the windows closed. Yes, you get better air quality with an HVAC system when you keep those windows closed. That's the way it's designed. It um, allows for all of the air to go through filters and actually be provided in a um, uh, in the best possible way um, with the with the um, windows closed. Um, the the correct uh, we think the best kind of ventilation um, uh, in 2023 is to increase the ventilation rate to 21 cubic feet per person and a minimum of five air changes per hour. Yes, that's true. Think think about it. The air that you have in your room, if your vent central ventilation system is working well, you will have new air completely changed over five times um, in an hour. And that's the amount of ventilation that's considered to be most uh, healthy to reduce airborne infectious diseases. Next slide. So when we have poor air quality, how does it get into our buildings? Well, it can get in through a window air conditioner. It can get in through the air intakes of a, a building that has an HVAC system. And so that's an important source. It also obviously can get in through windows and doors. 
And what's more is when that bad air gets in, it mixes with whatever indoor sources we might have. So um, lots of cleaning products or um, uh, volatile organics that are coming from our furnishings. Next slide. So if you have that central ventilation system, one of the things that you can do to help um, reduce the amount of particulates that come in from the outside um, is to have a very high quality air filter. And generally they are rated by their MERV. Don't ask me what that means, I don't know. MERV 13 or higher filter is what is, is recommended to remove the um, particles the best. Unfortunately, not all ventilation systems can tolerate using that MERV 13. So if yours can't, um, don't worry, use the best that it can. And um, whether or not you have a, a great air filter, even, even if you have an, a MERV 13, use an air purifier in your childcare center because even those great uh, MERV 13 filters don't do a great job when our air quality is in that unhealthy for sensitive population or unhealthy for all or very unhealthy ranges. We need more than that. We need those air purifiers in place and working. Um, the air purifiers, of course, need to be selected properly so that they're sized correctly for the room and they need to be maintained as directed by the manufacturer with the filters being changed or cleaned um, as recommended. Next slide. And if you don't have, or if you do have that central air um, system, one of the other things you can do is to keep that air system on recirculate. There may be a setting that you can make it so that it's not taking in fresh air from the outside. Instead, it's on recirculation. You can similarly do that with a window air conditioner. You can set it on recirculate so it won't be take, taking in the dirty air. It'll just be um, reconditioning the in, inside air and continuing to put it through that filter, which will continue to clean it, which is a good thing. You want to keep your windows closed, keep your doors closed, and also think about recognizing you're not bringing in a lot of fresh air because you've had these um, uh, you know, ventilation system on recirculate, doors and windows closed, you're using the same air. So because we're not um, ideally ventilating, we want to reduce even more the indoor sources. So perhaps um, do some of the heaviest cleaning after um, when children are gone, when we're, they're no longer present because those indoor sources will have a bigger effect because we won't be diluting them as well without that fresh air. Next slide. Well, there are all different kinds of smoke. Before we ever had wildfire smoke, we had smoke from vehicle traffic, trucks and cars, and also from industry. And all of the, these pollutants really um, have a few things in common. They're, they're all from combustion sources. And whenever we have combustion sources, whether it's burning wood from a wildfire or burning coal from a coal-fired power plant, we have particulates and we have chemicals that can be irritants and also carcinogens. And similarly, um, adding to these, um, uh, these particulates and chemicals are the indoor sources like the cleaning products, pests and mold that might, um, might be present in a childcare center. And so we'd wanna minimize those to the extent possible. But I wanted to say that just because, this is for you can stay there. I just wanted to say that um, it, it almost, it, it matters um, a little bit what the source of the smoke is, but the reality is, is that pollution is pollution and it really um, is all um, harmful. Next, next slide. And in one of the key ways it's harmful to children who live in urban areas, Philadelphia, for example, has two to three times as much childhood asthma as the rest of, of Pennsylvania um, um, uh, generally, but other cities within Pennsylvania similarly have these, these same kinds of elevations. And that's because there are so many different things that combine to worsen asthma. Asthma is the third leading cause of hospitalization among children and poor 
air quality can also worsen allergies in addition to asthma. Next, um, next slide. So here's a, not to get too technical, but we breathe air in through our nose and our mouth. And some of the really large particles get caught in our nose and mouth. But the smaller ones, the ones that can be most impactful to our health, get way deep into the lungs. And they have the opportunity to irritate our airways all along the way. So as you breathe in through your nose and your mouth, then the air travels through the um, back of the, of the um, throat, um, into the um, trachea, and then into the air tubes within the lungs. They're called the bronchi, which are, there are two of those, and they split into bronchioles or smaller tubes that go throughout then the lungs and deliver the air to the alveoli, where there's that um, uh, connection between um, the oxygen being delivered and the carbon dioxide coming out. But in any case, let's look at those bronchioles in more detail. Next slide. Those air tubes within the substance of the lung normally have a nice open tube like you see on the left. But as irritants from air pollution pass through, they cause a, a constriction of that bronchial as you see in the middle. And when it gets worse, when the concentrations are higher, when there's a lot of irritation, when maybe a child with asthma has other triggers that are also triggering them at the same time, they can have a very hefty um, constriction as you see on the bronchial on the right and with very little passage of air. And this is why asthma can be such a life threatening disease because children who get to the, the point where they're passing very little air really can pass out and not be able to get enough, in enough air. Next slide. I want to give you a sense, um, you probably already know that many different triggers can impact asthma. And any single asthma exacerbation, you don't know um, what those triggers might be for the individual child. At home, they might have pets. The air pollution might be bad. There might be a lot of pollen. It might be in high pollen season. Um, there might be mold at home. There might be mold in your child care center. You might have irritating uh, cleaning products if you um, haven't yet switched to the safer ones. Um, there might be smoking at home. And just you know, um, all of these things don't have to be present at the exact same instant for them all to have an impact on a child's asthma flare. So if they, they may come to you having been exposed to several of these things, and then on the walk to the child care center may experience bad air pollution, and then, um, you know, have their flare once they're with you or soon thereafter. When children play out, we know they run around and we know they they breathe faster than we do. They breathe more times and they um, uh, they 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 tend to breathe more air just in general for these reasons. Um, reducing any of these children of these uh, triggers can really help reduce the likelihood of an asthma flare in children. And so um, we this is why we like to stress um, reducing any of the things that you can by any of the methods that we've discussed or that you can uh, you know of. Um, next slide. And so what can you do? Um, Randy already touched on this, but I wanted to reiterate that um, knowing the air quality every day is so critically important because you if you don't know what the air quality is, you can't really take any action. And let me tell you what some of those actions might be. First of all, to sign up for the air quality alerts, you just need to go to airnow.gov and you can get a text message or an email with the daily information. It usually tells you what today is and what tomorrow is. And it's really easy to look at because it tells you in colors. Those colors that Randy mentioned, good for green, yellow for moderate, both of those the kids can play outside. Orange and red shouldn't be playing outside. Um, and those colors are just easy to interpret from that real quick um, text or email that you might get. You can sign up for the EPA's air quality flag program um, and, and 
make sure that your staff and your uh, parents um, know about it so that they can take care of their kids when they go home just as well as you are during the, during the day. Um, the air quality um, flag program um, uh, has um, these very large banner type flags that are um, the kind of thing you might fly in a fat flagpole. Most childcare centers don't even have a flagpole. Um, and so I would suggest don't be put off by that. Um, we have an opportunity um, through our session today and through the um, our, our partners um, uh, at Women for a Healthy Environment um, to have you sign up to get smaller flags that you can more easily display on a um, a, a cork board or, a, or somewhere else in your child care center. So if you're interested in doing that, please just put your name and email address in the chat and we will try and um, uh, contact you and, and get you hooked up for these free um, air flags that you can use in your centers. And I we really can't um, stress enough your role in being the important communicator to parents um, about this, these same issues. Next slide. So on the um, orange or red days or purple or those or that maroon, I, we've, I guess I've never seen the maroon around here, thank goodness. But any of those, anything um, worse than yellow, um, you really need to keep the children inside. And so I saw I saw one question go through, like, how long can they be outside? My feeling is if they have to walk to and from your child care center, that's long enough outside in bad air quality. Um, it would be best to have um, them not be outside at all. If you feel that it's essential to let them go out, you know, maybe 15 minutes um, uh, might be OK if it's orange. But um, it not not children with asthma, I, I would recommend them not going out at all in, in an orange day. Um, next slide. And so let's think about ventilation and sort of the whole picture. If we have um, an air quality index that's green or yellow, um, increase ventilation inside by opening windows or using your ventilation system to its maximum. Um, children can play outside and cleaning is okay and certainly better if you use the safer choice products. If on the other hand, you have orange, red, or purple, you wanna decrease the outside air by closing windows and doors and putting air conditioners on recirculate. Use fans for cooling um, instead of the air conditioner if you, if you can. Um, use air purifiers on high on these days with poor air quality. Children shouldn't play outside and you wanna minimize cleaning products um, while the children are present, even the safer ones, because just because they're safer doesn't mean they aren't still mildly irritating because frankly, they you know, need to have some of that property in order to do their cleaning job. Next slide. And so I'd like to offer um, to have you follow us um, at our Philadelphia Regional Center for Children's Environmental Health. Follow us on Twitter and with our other social media, and also visit our website, um, PRCCEH, Philadelphia Regional Center for Children's Environmental Health, .upenn.edu. Um, we have some resources on our uh, website that may be of use to you, um, and you always can contact us for any kinds of questions having to do with children's environmental health, and we hope that we can be helpful. Next slide. And um, so if you're interested in becoming a healthy child care um, uh, champion, um, you can um, text this number um, with your name and email or put it in the chat. Um, na your name and email right now in the chat, and we're happy to um, uh, take, the, take the information either way. And I will turn it back to Lorna. Thank you both, Randy and uh, Dr. Haworth, for such excellent and informative presentations. Uh, I did want to mention that Dr. Haworth is with the University of Pennsylvania Medical School. I did not include that in her introduction, so... Uh, please note that. And you see here on the screen that we have two opportunities to be involved with our programming. So the first is with a healthy child care champion. So if you uh, put in uh, on the chat number one, uh, we will know that that is for the healthy child care champion program. 
just to be clear, that is just for Philadelphia childcare. You know, we have folks from other parts of the Commonwealth, which is terrific, but um, we can only offer the program in Philly at the moment. And the other is if you're interested in the free air quality flags, put in number two and your name and your, um, your email address. And also if you can put your zip code in, that would be great because that way we'll know where you're uh, participating from around the Commonwealth. And this is for Pennsylvania only uh, childcare. So please uh, do note that for all of those who might be from out of state. Uh, I see we have lots and lots of folks that are interested, so we're really thrilled. Is there any, if there are any more questions, you can put them in the chat or you can unmute yourself, uh, Ebba, and ask questions to our presenters directly. So feel free to do that. I'll give you an opportunity to unmute and ask questions. I think we had a very good question that Dr. Howarth did address about um, how long to be outside and uh, Again, the idea of uh, serious uh, outdoor hard, hardcore play for 25 or 30 minutes, which you might do on a regular basis when the air quality is good, is not good and not recommended for orange or red or, or purple days by any means. Uh, but if you need to bring your child to child care and transfer in and out of a car or take a very short walk to deliver them there, then that's fine. Um, also, it's really valuable, as was already mentioned, uh, to be able to, the reason why we reach out to child care is because you have more control over what happens in your centers and your facility than the kids have at home. And every bit and opportunity you have to reduce these environmental triggers to the kids to improve their health and keep them um, and yourself uh, and your staff healthy and well during these uh, challenging times, then we appreciate that. And then transferring uh, the information to the families you, whose children you care for is also really valuable. So uh, all in all, it's uh, a great opportunity for us to be able to uh, inform you and help you uh, get this information uh, out to the public and, and know what to do when it's a challenging time, because we all wonder what's our best approach. So I see we have a lot of folks that have uh, contributed it and we appreciate that. If there are no other specific questions, I think we can end and give everybody some time back and uh, we will make the recording available to everyone so you can review it and you can share it with others. Randy or Dr. Howard, do you have any other information you want to wrap up with? Final words? Well, I just wanted to, to um, just throw out a couple of questions to the audience and see if there were uh, to maybe stimulate um, some other questions. You know, I, I mentioned about those filters. Um, I don't know whether or not filters in, in your air systems are things that you may have knowledge about or or considered and um i i think that it, it will be it may be useful to make to ask questions among, for to the people who may know about them because you may be part of a building and someone else may be taking care of that and that's fine but it's good to ask the questions so that you know um what's happening and also how do get that ventilation system to be on recirculate when when the time comes um there you know sometimes you need to do some pre-work to figure out how to accomplish something if it's not under your direct control um so i i was just wondering were there any questions or any um any sort of strategy questions about how to get that accomplished if I can add some information to that, that the MERV does, stands for Minimum Efficiency Reporting Values. Thank you. MERV is much, much easier, and it's similar to a HEPA-type filter that does filter out particles, as uh, you learned today. But also, you can, if you are replacing your filters at home, these are filters that you can buy at your local Home Depot Lowe's uh, 
the home improvement store. So it's not something that's exotic and unfamiliar or through mm -hmm. Amazon that they are uh, achievable and available in uh, the world that we live in. So it's not something extraordinary. And to keep in mind, if your system doesn't work for a 13, which is one of the higher levels of MERV uh, filter ratings, you can go to a slightly lower one and perhaps use an air filter uh, in, turn, in, your, in your space in order to optimize the uh, reduced particulates. And air purifier. Yeah, air filter, air purifier. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I don't didn't have anything else that I wanted to uh, mention. Uh, not for us. I think we're going to give folks a bit of time back and yeah. thank <laughs> them all for participating. And we will get the air flags out to you as soon as we can. I just want to. Be... Or by we, the end, end of the month, but we will be working on that and getting them out to folks. Yes, Randy, go ahead. Uh, before you end it, I just, uh, there, there's also some uh, questions in the Q&A. Uh, I just want to say that anyone who posted their email or the number in the chat or texted that number, you're recorded as well. Um, I know there were some questions in the Q&A. So there is one um, that I just act, answered back if they are in Philadelphia. But someone did ask, well, if you do live in a lower income community and you can't um, don't have the access to an air filter. So I did reply back if you are in Philadelphia, because that is something that the city is able to help provide. And if you haven't received one, it would be meaningful to reach back out to them. But uh, that's as much as I can talk, say, in terms of uh, Pennsylvania, it's only Philadelphia that I know that they gave out the air filters. And that's the Philadelphia Health Department. And if you contact us, we can help facilitate you getting air filters if you're in Philadelphia. They are available uh, at your home improvement stores and on uh, the through the internet. And we do recommend them. You know, let me just go back to that question about uh, how how long people can, children can play outside when it's orange and red. My answer was basically. Um, they can you can walk to walk in and out of a child care center, but if if it's um, and, and if it's orange, possibly play for about 15 minutes. But I would not take I, I would not allow anyone to be outside on a red day. Or, or, or a purple day that is that's in fact, uh, I'm not sure I unless I absolutely had to walk my children to the child care center. I'm not sure that I would allow them outside. I would, I, as a parent, I might not even take my children to the child care center on a red day if I had to walk a long way, because um, it, a red day means unhealthy for everyone, absolutely everyone, including the staff without asthma and this and and any other health condition. It is an un, truly unhealthy to be breathing that air. Thank you. That's good advice. Doesn't look like there's anything else coming into the Q&A section, so that seems fine. And the chat is also good. Okay. That's great. Thank you all for participating and caring for your kids by being educated about how to deal with uh, poor indoor and outdoor air quality. So this is Our, really uh, special. Before Are we you done? Start, another oh. question came in. Um, so Dr. Haworth, if you want to take this one, it's set uh, a chocolate provider put in the chat, we'll put in the Q&A. Could the air quality affect a kid's growth? So, Poor air quality, um, you know, interferes with uh, well-being. So if if children are in um, an area with poor air quality for a significant number of days and months, um, it can certainly affect their growth. But I don't think the episodes that we've experienced here um, are are having any long-lasting effect 
um, they're having an acute effect on asthma and respiratory um, conditions as you know, the way I understand it. Um, there are places in the world where uh, people experience very poor air quality most days. And in those places, um, people are not as healthy. And so growth is impacted, um, development and um, heart disease and asthma and cancer and um, poor birth outcomes, a whole variety of very significant health effects. Um, but those are ex longer exposures for longer periods of time. Thank you. And it looks like everything is cleared again. Um, if you would, if you have any other questions, uh, Dr. Hopworth, if you want to drop your, I know I took the screen sharing off it, but if you want to drop it in the chat um, and any related questions you got, everyone can email um, Dr. Millen as well. And I'll throw my email in the chat as well as Lorna's, just in case anyone has any other questions that you can't think of right now. <laughs> 